Hello everyone. Welcome back to the beginner photography class. What is a good travel picture? Part 3. If you remember the memories of your travel destination, for a long time with the photos you took, it will go beyond good photos and become beautiful photos. Please watch today's lecture video, and take more meaningful travel photos. I hope this useful information will help you with your photos. If it's a commemorative photo, the scenery and people should be bright and accurate. Photos are greatly affected by the background location. The more distracting the background is, the harder it is to focus on the main character of the picture. Choose a background that feels as neat and tidy as possible. Also, for photos that include people, it would be good to make the background bright to give a warm feeling. What makes good travel photos? Contents of video First Shoot with backlight Second Food photos Third Before taking a picture Fourth Parallel composition Fifth Shooting mode Sixth Exposure compensation Seventh Using light First, shoot with backlight. Create three-dimensional travel photos with backlighting. A photo taken with the light slightly behind the subject can create a backlit photo that feels good. However, be careful as the subject may only come out completely black if you shoot with full backlight. Backlit photos are recommended if you want a snapshot with a slightly different look. Here are 5 easy techniques to help you balance the exposure, when you are shooting backlit photos. 1. Keep the sun or another light source out of frame. 2. Use something to block the sun. 3. Find the good angles. 4. Make sure your subject has enough light. 5. Lens quality matters. Second, shall we take pictures of food? Food can also be photographed with a weak backlight. You can also express the texture by taking pictures so that the shape of the food subject appears. In the example photo, you can see the direction of the shadow with the cup or vase on the dining room table. Halation means that, the surface of an object receives strong light and is much more exposed than other parts, so the original color tone is lost, and the food looks delicious at this time. If you move your smartphone or camera to shoot with a subject at the edge of the backlight, take a picture at the moment when the sparkling light shines on the food. Transparent foods such as beverages look much prettier when photographed with full backlighting. Before taking a picture. As explained in the previous part 2 video, if you actively use the screen one-third division method, you can get a clean excitation. It's easy to get distracted if you add too many at once. Before taking a picture, it's good to look around, set the subject, and take a picture. 
if there are a lot of tourists, wait a bit and take a picture when the crowd isn't crowded. Also, specifying to display grid lines, or guides in your phone or camera settings, can be a great help, for aligning horizontally and parallel. The famous photographer said that proper composition of photos is to remove unnecessary subjects. Rather than putting a lot of information on a small screen, you should try to find a well-represented main theme. Fourth, take photos in a parallel composition. Take care so that the plane of the subject and my lens are parallel. If you snap a picture too quickly at a travel destination, you can take a slanted picture because it doesn't produce very good results. In fact, the best travel photos are often not expensive and high quality DSLRs, but can be taken with a mobile phone. When taking a picture with a mobile phone, most people hold the phone horizontally and take it in parallel with my body with both hands, because this is the essence of creating the most realistic composition. Objects are not distorted, and unwanted defocusing, does not occur, when photographs are taken, with this parallel composition, which is called the T-shaped composition, with a standard focal length of around 50 millimeters. 1. If you take a picture with a wide-angle lens with a wide angle of view, distortion may occur in the surrounding area. 2. When an object is photographed with a telephoto lens with a narrow angle of view, the distant background is compressed, and the objects are seen blowing back, and forth. Of course, there are some pictures to be taken like this, but the best pictures are pictures with the same compositional feeling, as our eyes saw. Fifth, selection of the shooting mode. Aperture priority mode is recommended. Which mode is used by many professional photographers? The answer is that you choose a shooting mode, that is comfortable for you, but you use the aperture priority mode for more benefits. Most beginners find it very difficult to control their own exposure. Helping with these difficulties is the choice of shooting mode. Anyone who can freely combine ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, which can be called the three musketeers of exposure, can use the manual mode, but if the operation is inexperienced or the understanding of the theory is insufficient, use the manual mode. Let's use the aperture priority mode, A mode or AV mode for short. In the aperture priority mode, the camera automatically sets only the shutter speed to the appropriate exposure standard, and you can adjust the depth of field, such as out focusing by adjusting only the ISO and aperture. The following is the shutter speed mode, as S mode or TV mode, which also prevents blurring of photos, and can be advantageous in travels where moving subjects are often photographed. Sixth, Exposure Compensation Button Have the ability to compensate for exposure and try backlit photography. The backlit conditions in which the photographer faces the sun and takes a picture are very burdensome. The direct light that the subject to be photographed receives light is easily in focus, its natural color comes out well, and it is easy to adjust the exposure. 
I recommend taking half backlit photos, and pictures feels a little light, emphasizing the dark silhouette then the proper exposure is displayed on the camera. Especially, you can express intense travel photos in the backlight. Bleeding or clarity slightly brighter than adequate exposure. When shooting in aperture priority mode, you can easily adjust the exposure, using the camera's exposure compensation buttons. Backlit shooting is difficult, but you can get a more impressive and emotional picture. Seventh. Lastly, let's shoot in a light environment. There is also a method of using light that comes through the leaves or light that illuminates the surroundings. In particular, the sunlight falls obliquely in the magic hour one hour before sunset, and it is easy to create an impressive scene that emphasizes the silhouette and the feeling of light. If you take a picture so that the light comes out slightly over the end of the photo, it can give a mysterious feeling, so try it. The difference between a DSLR and a compact camera and a smartphone camera, in a bright place is not so big, but in a dark environment, there is inevitably a difference. If you only take photos of your travels on your mobile phone, taking more photos during the day than in the evening, may be one way to get a much better quality photo. Some people may think that photography is easy. However, the picture shows us an accurate and honest result. If you want to take your photography skills up to the next level, I encourage you to attend community college photography group classes, or college classes. To learn systematically based on the pictures and the camera will be more capable. Take care, be safe, and remember all this. Today, I explained how to take travel photography for beginner photographers. I hope this information has been helpful. I've outlined how to practice as easily as possible. However, if you understand this, it doesn't seem that difficult to shoot with a camera. In the next video, I'll show you some more informative aspects of photography.